Hello and welcome to the latest video and podcast from Fantasy Football Scout as we look ahead to game week 29. My name is Joe and today I'm joined by Fantasy Football Scout's deputy editor Tom Freeman to reveal our free hit teams ahead of the blank game week. Welcome Tom, how are you? Yeah, I'm all right, thanks Joe. Yeah, like you say there, on, on a free hit, I think I've only got five players. If I didn't, um, six with a transfer, so it, it makes sense for me to free hit this week mm -hmm. and... Um, yeah, looking forward to see your draft. I've put a, yeah. put together a bit of a, a draft for the site as well, which we're going to use as a, a kind of a template, an example. And um, yeah, looking forward to find like kind of working out where you might be able to take a bit of a pump because there's certainly quite a few mm. players who are locked in, aren't there? Yeah, certainly. I was when you when you sent me the picture of the 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 team, the mock up team that you've got. Um, there was in the signing level. There's just one difference from mine, yeah. <laughs> so I yeah. felt I felt quite pleased. I was thinking along the same lines, um, yeah. but yeah, we'll try and mix it up a bit. And so this will be valid for those who are free hitting and also those who aren't free hitting as well, because they want to see what they're up against. And also free hitters will be trying to get the best players in. So that's what you want to be doing with your transfers as well. So you're going to need to think about game week 30 if you're going to be using transfers as well. And so it's worth, uh, well, let's put, let's put the, uh, I'll put the fixtures up in a sec. Just a reminder though, do press that like button, helps us out. And do remember to subscribe, keep updated with all the latest videos and podcasts and check out membership offers at fantasyfootballscout.co.uk to use their tools and gadgets to climb up your mini leagues. Um, let's have a look at the fixtures uh, because, so if you're, um, if you're not free hitting, <laughs> so if you're free hitting or not, there's only eight teams playing, Nottingham Forest, Fulham, Brentford, Burnley, Tottenham, West Ham, Aston Villa and Luton. They're the only teams that are playing um, in game week 29. So if you're not free hitting, you want to get those players in those teams that are also got good fixtures there on. Uh, and Nottingham Forest could be there. They've got Crystal Palace at home and Fulham at home, game week 30, 31. So it's a nice run of games for them. Uh, Brentford as well, Manchester United at home, Brentford at home afterwards that could be good for Tony Rissa attacking the players certainly Luton uh, sorry T Tottenham players uh, very good to get in Fulham because they play Luton in game week 30 that makes people like Son captainable so they're the sort of players I would be considering bringing in um, for you but yeah I mean what does the sort of season ticket tell you not I mean obviously there's a blank game week in 29 but in terms of sort of looking ahead a bit as well the sort of players we want to target yeah, I think those Tottenham fixtures are really nice, aren't they? So to go from Fulham to Luton at home and then going to West Ham, who haven't been great defensively mm. this year, and then Forest after that. So I think even if you're not on a free hit, I think going triple Spurs this week probably makes a lot of sense because you can get a few more weeks out, out of them after if you're not planning to yeah. wild card. Forest, Fulham fixtures are OK. Brentford, you know, a couple of home games after 29, so that's fine too. I think from from game week 30... You know, we speak, we've been speaking about it a lot, but Salah feels really important for those two home yeah. games and, and Cole Palmer as well. If anybody doesn't own him, I'm not sure there's that many around. Although some no. people maybe, no. maybe sold him a couple of weeks ago. You're going to be wanting to get him back, aren't you, with Burnley and Sheffield United in that little kind of three-match run. Um, and then, of course, we've also got to think about the doubles, which aren't included in this chart in 34, which aren't confirmed yet. But we're thinking kind of Palace, Man United, Newcastle, Sheffield United, I think, are the kind of the, the, the potential clubs doubling then. So you you want to bear that in mind too with your transfers from 30 onwards. Yeah, certainly. And on the flip side, West Ham have got Villa in game 29. It's not, not the best fixture, I guess. But then they've got Newcastle and Tottenham. So it's not great coming out of there. Same with Villa as well. They've got West Ham. The Wolves at home, OK. And then City away and they also have Arsenal uh, game week 33 so that's not great so they're not if I wasn't free hitting I would not be particularly targeting Villa and West Ham assets I'll be looking no. at Nottingham Forest Tottenham especially Tottenham and as you said mm. trying to get Salah in which case I think we, we had a question in our goals imminent video um, around is it worth getting a Langer in for a, a more expensive midfielder that perhaps doesn't play like Foden for example and yes, because it frees up money and we're going to want money because if you've got rid of Haaland, for example, a few people did Haaland um, to uh, Morris, for example, you're going to want Haaland back soon, um, especially uh, Aston Villa at home. Game week, well, nice run. Game week 31, Aston Villa at home, Crystal Palace away, Luton at home. You're going to want Haaland back for that. You're going to want Salah in game week 30. 
Um, you're going to want to keep Son because he's got Luton in game week 30, West Ham, then Nottingham Forest up to game week 32 and then Newcastle away. Um, so, OK run. So, yeah, lot, lots to think about whether you're free hitting on. Well, I say whether you're free hitting on. If you're not, if you're free hitting, you just have to keep it in mind who you might want to get in game week 30. But um, yeah. it's a that's a long way away if you're free hitting. Yeah. Um, OK, let's have a look at before we look at our, our bus teams or rather our sort of free hit teams. Um, I've got uh, a couple of tables I can put up. This is last six matches. One I already put up on FPL General's show about best attackers. It's very much tailored towards him, actually. Um, but other people in the I haven't highlighted the likes of Watkins, Morris or Son. They're in a lot of teams already. So I've highlighted some of those sort of differential players that we might want to get in. Bailey at Aston Villa, Munez at Fulham, who's an attacker, Langer at Nottingham Forest, Fafana at Burnley has got has got three goals. Who knew that Burnley have got a striker that scored three goals in his last six matches um, and is uh, one of the best attackers for game week 29. Um, Kudos at West Ham, Wissa at, Brent, at Brentford, um, Bowen and Tony obviously in the same pool as Son and Watkins, for example, and in being quite... Um, popular already but yeah I have this list of attackers really aside from the obvious ones like Son and Watkins who 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 do you think for the if, if you've got a spare midfield slot spare attacker slot who would you go for I think Caduce kind of jumps out as a player who could a lot of quality who could do really well depending on how the match on Thursday goes but you could potentially you could potentially go with Caduce and Bowen on a on a free hit and double up on that West Ham midfield. Yeah. Tony's an Tony isn't as highly as owned as you think he is, so he's an, he's another absolute lock on my free hit anyway. Um, and Alanga, I mean, we spoke about it on goals imminent. He was he was benched last week, but we think that might have been a specific tactic for the Brighton game, given Nuno's comments after the match. And the Forest attacker is appealing for this game away at Luton because Luton will give up chances. Um, so yes, I, I would probably say, I think in the draft, which we're about to see, I think you've got Bowen and you've got Tony in there and then of the more popular names, yeah. Son and Watkins. Okay. But there uh, might, there might be room to differentiate a little bit with one midfielder. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at either Alanga, Bailey or Kudos, I think for that slot. Mm. I, and I couldn't give them in order because I'm not sure what's going to happen after Europe. So obviously West Ham yeah. and Aston Villa are playing midweek. Also, um, Alanga surprisingly dropped at the weekend. Hopefully he'll come back. But you know what you don't want is question marks on players on a free hit. You want guaranteed playing because yeah. um, Alanga's yeah. not the sort of player he's you know he could come on for the last ten minutes. In which oh, case, absolutely, he will one, do. Yeah, at one point. yeah. So, um, and and it's a bit like Bailey as well. I mean, if Bailey gets. 80, 90 minutes, potential extra time on Thursday. And Diaby's the one coming off the bench. You might be a bit unsure about that because Bailey, again, will come on at some point in that West Ham match, even if he doesn't start. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big... You might you might prefer to go with somebody like Gibbs-White, for example, mm. over Alanga because he's got those those lock minutes, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely. So I think... I mean, I wouldn't better give them in order, but it's going to be one of those ones, I reckon. And a lot's going to mm. depend on Europe. And kudos, I kind of like. I, I, I think the most goals could be the Tottenham Fulham game, but the West Ham yeah. Villa game, two both in Europe, both good on the counter. They both got the players for that. Bowen Watkins, yeah. someone's got to assist them. Someone's got to score, perhaps, yeah. um, be assisted by them. So yeah, it's gonna be one of them. Um, the the other question on is defenders as well. So, uh, Poro, or a doggy, but. Poro, I think, and Alfie Doughty are locks for me. I think Reggion is good, um, but he has got a small hamstring problem. So best defenders. So I tried to look at, uh, I've got a, a table of attacking defenders, last six matches, and I just sorted by um, chances created and just kept in those with a blank game, uh, those playing in 29. Top is Alfie Doughty, 17 chances created, seven shots in the box. He's an absolute lot for me. Uh, Porro, um, next in terms of chances created, created eight. He had a, a shot inside the box as well. Um, all their minutes per baseline bonus of sis, point system are really good, by the way. 
Um, Reggie on his neck, six chances created. He has got three assists over his last six matches. Uh, Poro with one assist, um, but Doughty with a couple of assists. Um, and in terms of, and then the next one is a doggy um, who has got six chances created. Um, and his minutes per baseline bonus is good, strong as well. Well under t- um, every every um, 7.9 minutes in his case. Um, yeah, so these are the candidates, Doughty, Poro, and one more. I want it to be Reggion, but let's let's assume Reggion isn't fit or is a doubt this weekend. Who do we get in? Because I, I don't want to get a doggy as well because I want Spurs attackers. Yeah. Probably an alternative Brentford fullback, I would say. Either Roeslev on the, the right. You could go for a centre-back like um, Christopher Agier or something like that. Yeah. Of course, that does probably mean that you're going to be doubling up on the Brentford back line. Yeah. And given the injuries they've got with Pinnock and me and Henry out and players like that, it's not ideal. No. But there isn't, a, there isn't a lot of defenders to go for this week. I don't feel confident back in a West Ham defender or a Villa defender. No. I think they both score in that game. I don't think Luton or Forest keep a clean sheet either. So then you are kind of looking, but but doubt is there obviously mm-hmm. because of that attacking mm-hmm. threat. I think um, no team has conceded more goals from set pieces this season than Nottingham Forest. So for somebody like Doughty, that's why he's in there. Um, so I do agree. It, it probably does have to be Doughty, Porro and one other. And if yeah. Reggion isn't fit, that might be Roeslev for me. Oh, that is so... Um... <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm a player. I've got Zabani in <laughs> for this, which is pretty boring. Um, but get I, I just it's just doubling up on that Brentford defence. I do actually think Burnley are going to score. I've got Flecken in because I I think Flecken's yeah. good for the for um, save points. But I think if I did, if Reggion wasn't, I don't mind doubling up on the Brentford defence if it's Reggion because I think his chance his attacking returns are so strong. Yeah. But yeah. I think if I went for someone like. Roslev or, or just another defender, I might not go for Flecken and just go for su- just go for a, go go for save points. Good goalie. I mean, your man Martinez, he's a good goalie. Yeah, World Cup winner. I mean, and there might be if, for instance, Luca Dean starts again on Thursday and plays a lot of minutes. Mm. You might feel more inclined to go for somebody like Alex Moreno, potentially, yeah. who's got a lot of attacking threat um, mm. as well. So it does feel like those games on Thursday, they, they might be important for one or two mm. players, um, including Bailey, including Moreno and things like that. And we might have a bit more clarity on Friday after that game. But it's, it's slim pickings, definitely, it um, is. Yeah. in d- terms of defenders. So that's why uh, um, those who aren't free-hitting, focus your transfers on attackers. Get seven players out and forget defence. <laughs> I mean, if you if you want to get like a Porro or a Doughty in, if you haven't got them. But, I mean, there's not much there. I can't see clean sheets. And there was li- these literally the only four I would c- consider for attacking returns. Because whilst Mourinho mm. is ordinarily would be there i can't guarantee he's going to start or not whereas i do think yeah. all four of these if fit will start and i say yeah. if fit because Reggion has a slight hamstring issue which when i sort of when i hear players with hamstring and it's like a week to go that's like surely he's going to be a doubt again but we'll find out team news at the end of the week let's say yeah um okay well let's put shall I put my team up first because your you your team's yeah. not really your team yours yours is the fantasy football scout sort of draft as it's going type yeah team. we ran a ran an article last night which was a bit of a free hit guide where we looked at ownership of players we looked yeah. at um the pros and cons but we also put a couple of drafts together okay. and this was the kind of the template okay. one so okay. yeah have a look at yours well, first yeah. and then okay we well mine is mine. Mine's basically the template then <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, so uh, i've also put next to it my plan um so th- this this will sort of help my thinking where I'm going to use other chips and things. So my free hit to benefit for those listening on uh, the podcast version, I've got Flecken in goal, Porro, Reggion and Doughty. As I said, these are pretty much the only three I would consider. A doggy is the other one, but you can only have three players from each team. And I want two Spurs attackers. I've got Son and Madison and Son has got the armband. I've got Bowen, currently Bailey, but he could be a Langer who is on my bench. Or he could be kudos. It's going to be one of those three. I could be persuaded elsewhere. A Wobi, perhaps. It's very much up for grabs. I'm not locked in with Bailey. Um, I've got Morris, Tony and Watkins. It would have been a one year, but 
Um, I don't know whether he's going to start. There's options with Chris Wood up top there. I think I think Morris, if uh, Adebayo's Bo's not back, I think Morris and Doughty against Nottingham Forest at home. That's going to be a great combination. Tony, I'm in. I'm not um, averse to getting Rissa in instead, but you don't need the money. And um, Tony's on penalties. Watkins, um, not on penalties, but Watkins is Watkins. One of the best players in the game at the moment. On my bench, I've got Areola as a backup. Uh, Alanga, uh, I mentioned before, I've got Pau Torres and Kufal. Weirdly, I put Kufal in. I just I was just looking at a West Ham defender just on the bench. And I, th- I believe he's in the template team as well on the bench. So I've even gone that far, that deep on my template. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess your comment with this is, is very, very, very standard. But it's those probably three slots up for grabs. Region's one, Bailey's one. Arguably Morris's one, perhaps. Yeah. Um, yes. So I'd agree with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which one? <laughs> which one? I don't know. We're gonna. I'm gonna wait until Villa, West Ham playing Europe. That's just the way it's gonna be. Yeah. And um, Morris is gonna be popular. The only thing making me kind of think, do I go with somebody different? Is I think Morris will be quite highly a highly owned with players who aren't free hitting. Mm. Because they their tactic has been to get loot and players in for the double game week, then they're there for 29. The people who are free hitting mm. have probably got more Bournemouth um players in there. I certainly have. So I'm I'm thinking, is that an opportunity to back somebody else? Morris is a good option this week for sure. So it's risky. At home, he's probably on penalties. Oh well, he is mm. on penalties. Um yeah. But could there be an opportunity there to maybe go with something a little bit different in that slot? Bailey, absolutely. If Bailey plays 80 minutes on Thursday, I think that slot becomes freed up. Um, In the template team, I think it's Douglas Louise in that. I'm not so keen on Douglas Louise in this match. Um, Away from home, I think all of his goals this year have pretty much come at Villa Park. Um, And because McGinn's not there as well, the dynamic in the midfield might change a little bit. But certainly players like Langer, Gibbs White as well as another one, Kudus, players like that, that all of them could slot into that little that that position, couldn't they? Yeah, I mean, what you said about uh, Bay, um, uh, Louise as well about being at home and obviously he's playing away this game, but also Bailey. I was I was doing a home and away comparison. Um, yeah. Bailey, this so far this season, and you can probably either verify or back this up as a as a Villa fan. Bailey away in terms of expected goal involvement um he's about a third of the player than he is at yeah home. i mean emory's spoken about it and how he's just electric at home um but how away from home he needs to we need improvement and he said that only a couple of weeks ago with him and that always makes me doubt bailey in a way match that if it isn't going villa's way yeah. after 60 something minutes he could be with with players like diaby and rogers ready to come in he could be the one withdrawn so douglas louise has the minutes edge in that aspect and you can always get a penalty in a away game so mm-hmm. douglas louise yeah his returns haven't come up away from home but they could there's no reason why you can't get a penalty away but i do think that this might be a week depending on what happens in europe where i might be able might just say well i'm just going to go in with watkins mm-hmm. from villa and then i'm going to look for somebody um else in that midfield yeah. spot be it from forest or yeah. fulham so, or something like so that so this is since mm-hmm. i've done this draft i was looking at that home and away and i so i am sort of put off bailey at the moment mm. um so kudos is is one to mention alanga could just come straight in for me um gibbs yeah. white is a player i mentioned because um he's on penalties um mm. and i think there could be goals in that game um so i could just go for gibbs white over alanga yep. it's just it's just the minutes risk I, I, th- I feel that Gibbs White is definitely more secure for minutes than Alanga, just given Alanga was dropped last week. Yes, I definitely agree with that. I think he is. Alanga had been the one, maybe from open play, well, I think mm. from open play when you watch them, he's the one that carries the the, the most threat for Forrest. Um, it would be nice if we got a leak on Saturday, wouldn't it, about that Forest team? You don't normally get Forest yeah. leaks, so maybe I'm kind of a bit wishful yeah. thinking, maybe. But um, if, if we knew Elanga was going to start, then I think he becomes a, a really good option for that midfield. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, yeah. I'm, I, I feel like I, basically it's just two or three, and it's mainly based on team news, uh, places up for grabs yeah. in this one. Um, but where does yeah. this fit in with what I'm going to do? So I'll just read out my sort of plan. 
Um, I've got it right to the end of the season when I have a cup of tea and finish it all off. <laughs> um, so I've got game week 30. I've earmarked Foden, who's in my normal team, to Salah and captain him against Brighton. I could captain Son at home to you've Luger. Got, uh, you've, got, you've, you've got lots in the bank then, yeah, so I I've, presume, I've, yeah? I've, I've deliberately got 5.5 in the bank because I got Van Dyke, I got De Bruyne down to Son and Van Dyke down to uh, Zubani a plus with two million or so. It's left me with five and a half million in the bank. So I've got enough with 5.5 to spare. I don't have to do an early transfer. I can just wait over the international break, uh, make sure Salah's all, 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 all safe <laughs> and then get him in for Foden yeah. game week 30. In game week 31, 34, we're going to have an idea um, or know really when who's playing in double game week 34. So we know who we can target there or we'll have a very good idea um, and I, it, it could potentially be, for sake of argument, it could be Manchester United, Palace and Newcastle could be key teams. Could be. Um, in which case, I've already got Garnacho, I've already got Anderson. I will be looking to use my transfers in 31, 32, 33, 34. So there's four transfers. I'll take it here as well. So there's five transfers. I'll be looking to get in probably triple Newcastle or at least double Newcastle with Isaac. Botman, maybe Gordon, Eze, so that's four, um, and one more <laughs> um, out of those teams. And I'll see how it looks with my single game week players. I may even bench boost with that because if it's looking like I've got tough decisions where I've got to like, um, so in game week 34, I don't know, bench Haaland or something, then I'm just going to probably bench boost. And then, bench boost, yeah. And then wildcard 35, 36, and if I've already bench boosted, um, I would, I can and then focus on, I can go cheap as chips on the bench and I can really go to town on your Salas, Haaland, Son, make sure I've got all of those players in, all those players that are doubling in 37 and just have a really strong 11 and invest in that. But if not, I'll, I'll do it so that I've got a bench boost. I think Chelsea might have a double in 37, could do, in which case obviously Palmer's cheap, Gusto's cheap and so on. And then game week 38, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm just going to finish and have a cup of tea. <laughs> the season's over <laughs> job uh, done <laughs> so yeah that's that's my plan <laughs> uh, sounds it's, good it's a bit yeah well, it's you know it's a uh, last last uh, few months a couple of months of the season um let's I have mean, a look I, I mean yeah i was gonna say i haven't planned quite that far ahead <laughs> but i have got the moves in mind for the next couple of weeks yeah. at least surely so. have a cup of tea <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that's, that's, that's a definite, planned. No. um okay um let's have a look at your fancy football scouts um, template team that you think they're um, so very similar to mine and probably same issues. Do you want to just go through that so that people know what the what the sort of fancy football scout team are thinking for the template for a free hit? Yeah, the, yeah, and I suppose this was just from put together from gauging and looking at looking at drafts online and things, and we think this will be this will. At least eight play at these players. Probably nine will be in the template for the for the free hit twenty nine. So we've got Flecken in goal. We've got three defenders. We've got Porro, Doughty, and Reggion. Um, four across the middle: Bowen, Douglas, Louise, Madison, and Son. And then Tony Morris and Watkins up front. And then on the bench we've got Ariola, Ilanga, uh, Sufal, and Konza. Um, so very similar to what you put up just then, Joe. Um, I think we both agree that the the Douglas Louise and the Morris spots you could potentially differentiate mm. there if you want to. Yeah. Pat, maybe maybe with Reggie on if he um if he if it does look like he's a doubt, you could possibly mm. go for somebody in that slot. But the but certainly Bowen, Madison, Son, Tony, and Watkins, that feels like yeah. pretty locked on a free hit. And I think I think most managers would agree with that, wouldn't they? No. Yeah. I what what will happen on social media? Um, there'll be a train of thought that that for those free hitting or using transfers, we'll look at this and go, yep. And then gradually Wednesday, Thursday will come, and they go, no, I'm going to be different. I don't <laughs> want to do that. I don't want to captain Son. I don't want to get Bowen in. And then you'll start getting some of the um, you know some Wobies, and you get those players yeah. in. And and there's nothing wrong with them. Alanga, for example, these low owned players. And I want to play one or two of them. But I think the sensible approach would be to resist that notion of being different for different sake because you just yeah. want to be different because you're bored of seeing all of these free hit teams look the same. 
and just think who are the best players. And I think the best tactic is to have a broad base of around eight of these players. We all know those names, the Bowen, Son, Madison, Watkins, Tony, and then use those other slots to be a bit different. To yeah. get those differentials in, get a Langer in, a Wobi, consider him kudos, um, and and go for those players. Or you could be different and double up on a defence that you think is going to get a clean sheet. I personally don't can't see one, but if you think there's a team going to get a clean sheet, then go for that. And and those are the sorts of things you can do. But it's having that mix, isn't it? That's that's probably the best tactic. Yeah, I mean, you've got to think as well. Like if you go in and you don't own. Bowen or Watkins and they do haul immediately everybody's got those players well certainly Watkins everybody's got him so you're going against him and that could kind of really negate a lot of the impact of your free hit if one of those highly owned players does so so you've got to be clever with it I think and there is certain positions where you can have a bit more fun but a lot of this team does kind of pick itself this week and that's just the way it is um, given the way that the fixtures have fallen and what we've got available um so, yeah, I'm going to have a look at I mean, I don't think mine and my team will be too far away from that. I'm going to have another look at it later in the week and um, after after Europe, probably after the European matches on Thursday and then make a few decisions then. So the, um, the, going back to... Oh, sorry, Joe. No, no, I was just going to say, so so basically for free hitters, there probably is only a couple of players going to be different. And so, I mean, they could haul and so there could be a big points difference. So there might not be big points difference. The points difference will be when you look at those who aren't free hitting, who are perhaps taking minus eights and still three players short, then that's the advantage. That's going to be the advantage. Yeah, absolutely. And going back to my actual team, um, we discussed it last week, Joe, and I did end up taking out Haaland and Alvarez for, and I bought in Solanke and Semenyo. Um, so we'll see how that plays out on Wednesday. But that has basically given me nine million in the bank, which is which will fund De Bruyne to Salah in game week thirty, mm. and it will fund Ollie Watkins to Erling Haaland in thirty one. Mm. So um, I did go through with that plan, which I think yeah. you were the first one to yeah. uh, come up with that, that idea. So mm. thank you. Um, yeah, no, I think <laughs> it's a good, I think it's good. I mean, people will say, oh, uh, you know, Haaland to Morris, or for example, was another move. Um, I think they're perfectly reasonable because Haaland's not playing. <laughs> You're going to outscore yeah. him. And then he's got a tough fixture in 30, 30 mm, he has. against yeah. Arsenal. So Arsenal. Um, so it is 31. You can live without Haaland for a few bits. But then he does become a bit of a necessity, I think. Yes. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I wouldn't want to go. I wouldn't want it to go into that game, home game against no. Villa without him, which is... No why the people who have sold him i think a lot of people sold him as well he might be wild carding in 30 or 31 so then you can yeah. easily get him back in so if it's well thought out and through and you've got a plan then i don't mind it yeah definitely um well good luck with your decision um and uh, good luck in blank game week 29 good luck all those watching and listening do remember to press that like button really helps us out do remember to subscribe keep updated with our videos and podcasts and check out membership offers at fantasyfootballscout.co.uk to help you climb up your mini leagues um tom thanks a lot for joining us um we'll see you again next week cheers joe thank you